here today, I'm going to share a little bit about my story. Um, I was born in Los Angeles, but I moved back to Mexico for the first three years of my life. My parents moved me back to Los Angeles when I was three, and at that time, um, they didn't have any money to support to take care of me, so um, they broke into an abandoned home and stole electricity from the neighbors. Uh, both of my parents were uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol, and when someone is in that state of mind, they don't really think about anybody but themselves and their needs for the drugs and the alcohol. So for me, that meant that I had to take care of myself at a very young age. Uh, there was never any food in the house. So um, one day, I remember, I went into the fridge because I was so hungry and all that was in there was a carton of raw milk. And I still drank it because I was hungry and that's all that I had. And um, I still remember the texture of it to this day. And um, we also didn't have any beds to sleep in. All I had was a mattress on the floor with no sheets and no blankets. Um, next picture, please. Um, also, um, a few years passed and my mom had three um, girls. One of the oldest of the three girls moved to Mexico and got adopted by my biological aunt. And the other two were my responsibility. Next picture. Um, the, these are my sisters, Jessica and Stephanie. Um, Stephanie was one, and Jessica was a newborn, and at the age of six, I was taking care of them. I was um, changing their diapers and feeding them. When I couldn't find food for myself, I would eat the powder in my sister for formula. Eventually, the neighbors saw how my sisters weren't, and I weren't properly being treated and were being abused and they called Child Protective Services. Um, shortly after that, uh, I was at my aunt's house and we heard a knock on the door and um, there was this young woman that came in and none of us had ever seen her before and she talked to my aunt for a little bit and then she took my sisters and I by the hand and then told us that we would be safe with her. I, um, my heart was very hardened because I didn't know her and a stranger was taking me somewhere. I didn't know where I was going. Um, I didn't know that what my parents had done and what they were doing was bad. All that I knew was that they were my parents and someone was taking me away from them. I became very protective of my brothers, of my sisters at that time and um, I didn't want to trust anyone. My self-esteem really dropped through um, going through foster homes because um, I was moved and moved over and over again and um, I just felt like nobody wanted me and um, just because I was such a difficult child to deal with at the time because I didn't want to trust anybody. Um, finally, after eight placements and five different schools in three years, um, I found my forever family. Next picture, please. Um, at first, I was very hard on my parents because I wanted to test them and um, see if they would love me and take care of me or if they would give up and um, just give me away like everybody else has done. It took a while, but I did warm up to them and began to trust them. And they also adopted my little sister, Jessica. She's kind of hidden behind that little boy up there. and. Um, yeah, um, our other brothers and sisters were adopted with other Olive Cross families, and we see them at least once a month, so we still um, stay contacted and see each other a lot. Um, some of my accomplishments uh, recently was winning Best Smile um, in my class, which is very ironic because before I was adopted, I never smiled. Um, I was also a JV cheerleader for two years. Uh, my last year on cheer, I was the team captain. And in the future, I want to go to college to become a social worker so that I can help foster kids the way that social workers and Olive Press has helped me. I really want to thank Acosta for all your support. Thank you.